thank you today. Yes, thank God. you for the privilege to come to the house of worship. Yes, God. This truly is the day yes. that the Lord has made, and we have made up our minds to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for how you have brought us, and we thank you for all that you have brought us through. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for the things, Lord, that we have experienced. We thank you, Lord God, even for the departure from the house of God that taught us how to rely and have a relationship with you. We thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, because, Lord, we have learned so many things. Learned so many things even about ourselves, yeah. our weaknesses and our failures. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. But we most of all, hallelujah, we learn about your grace and your mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. To spare us another day and another time to give you the praise and the glory. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. We're going to talk just a little while. But uh, the subject I want to speak to you as God's people is the subject of commitment. Yes. Commitment. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you must begin to think in your heart what does it mean to be committed. Uh, and uh, I have been here about 72 years and I was witness to a day that you did not know nor see but it is not we have to understand that if we believe or understand that in this day and time that we are now living in I think we have lost and forgotten what it really means to be a Christian. And a lot of us have a whole lot of ideas. What does it mean to be a Christian? And it's not just believing in God, because the Bible says that the devil believes and trembles. It is not just believing Jesus, believing Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You got to go further than that. It is not just believing that Jesus was the scapegoat that bore the penalty of sin. You know what the scapegoat is. The scapegoat was used through the in the law, where the priests would come on the day of atonement, and then he would it would be the time when their sins were covered by the blood of the lamb. And so they took the blood and they had two goats and they put hands on one goat and transmitted the sins of the people to the lamb. And the other goat they put on the blood, amen. And then they let them go in the wilderness and that goat that escaped and went out into the wilderness was us. See, when Jesus died, he died for us. Yeah. He, he shed his blood for us yeah. and yeah. we went free and he suffered the penalty of the cross yeah. that's about the scapegoat amen so that that uh and and so he bore the penalty of sin for us and that he is the mediator between god and man that is christ jesus one mediator and he is laid and the bible says this that and God and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. That means what we should have received and what we uh, all, what God wants to, needs to give to us. Sometimes, you know, we think that, oh, back in the day, now I'm in the church. Some of us have done some stuff right in the church. And we have to believe God and understand that he's still willing to forgive us yes, if we repent, if we turn, amen, amen from our ways. Amen. And so it, it, it's good to know that. Uh, and so we have to believe that God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But I'm afraid it's more than that. Yes. See, when we understand this, we understand that when we come to God and when we come, whether we come to the altar and 
we give our lives to God, baptize in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We think we've made it. No, you've only just begun. That's right. You've only just started your Christian life. You were born again, and being born, you're just a baby. And you got to learn how to grow and how to walk in God and understand the things of God and uh, mature in God. Just like a natural baby has to mature, you and I must mature in God. Amen. And sometimes we can stunt our own growth when we do not hear what the Word of God is saying and do not uh, 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 obey what the Word of God is saying. Uh, he says, we, uh, uh, we fail to believe or understand that because we gave this, our, his, he gave his life for us, and now our life belongs to him. How many know that? Amen. In other words, you have made a commitment to say, Lord, you gave your life for my life, and now I have to be committed to you with all of my heart, all of my mind, and all of my soul. Amen. Look in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10. And Paul tells Timothy, says, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. He was talking about his imprisonment and his suffering and his preaching and how they, they uh, sought to kill him. And he said, I, but he says, I do this gladly. I do it for the elect's sake, the ones who are chosen. That's for us. Uh, he's given himself, 2 Timothy 2 says. And uh, uh, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So he wants us to, he, he, he suffered so that others might receive this gospel and that we would all be able to hear the gospel and be saved. Now, it is a, verse 11, it is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. And so, he says, and if we suffer, we shall also reign with him, and if we deny him, he also will deny us. Look at that. It is a faithful saying. If we be dead, are you dead this morning? So you've got to die. You've got to die. You've got to, if you don't die, you won't reign. That's the scripture. Amen. What do you mean die? I mean, I've got to die out to myself and my old nature that I was born with. <clears throat> you do know you were born with the ungodly nature. You do know that you are uh, have in you two natures, the nature of God and the nature of sin. And you must understand that you must die out to sin and to your flesh. All right. I know, I know I'm, I'm hitting some things because I can feel it in the spirit. All right. All right. And so, the, but if we suffer, we shall also reign. But See, a lot of us want to go to heaven. I'm on my way to heaven and so glad. But we don't want to suffer. We don't. we don't want to go through some things. And we think that suffering is always the devil. No, suffering sometimes is God because God has got to teach you something. He's got to teach me something. Because if I don't learn how to go through suffering, and sometimes it's because there's nothing but keep your mouth shut. You gonna suffer some things, but God is trying to teach you how to keep your mouth shut. Now we don't understand that. We think we're just supposed to do anything we just want to do, but God wants us to learn how to uh, uh, bring ourselves into the place where we submit to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt you yeah. in due season. Sometimes we want to be exalted, but we won't humble ourselves. And to humble ourselves is not my way, but is your not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. See, we want his will to be done in our life. Yeah. All right. So God does have a will, you know. And it should be done in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. And it says if we suffer, 
we shall also reign with him. And if we deny him, he shall also deny us. Now, how do we deny him? We deny him by not dying. Yes. You See? won't die, you're denying him. He said, How? You're denying his word. Mm -hmm. You're denying his commandments. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to die. Amen. And he says that, uh, 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 so, and, and let's look at uh, Matthew, the 16th chapter, and the 24th verse. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he just, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me so this was the very teaching of jesus christ and he says that if you want to be his disciple his follower can't be a christian in name only can't be a christian because i go to morning star church that doesn't make you a christian what makes you a christian if you are willing to follow him and follow his word if any man he says would come after me, let him come, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, remember, the disciples saw Jesus taken away. They saw him having to carry that heavy cross up Golgotha's hill. They saw him stumble under the weight of the cross, and yet God had people positioned to help him carry that cross. And so the Bible is saying, if you want to be his disciples, all of you need to get your cross. There is a cross for you. It is a heavy load. It will cause you to cry. It will cause you to be in a place where you feel so uncomfortable. But you've got to take the cross. Because what God is telling us, you've got to die. You've got to die. He died for us. Now we've got to die for him. And he says, for whosoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for me will find it. So that's another thought that he's adding to it, that he says, if you want to save your life or you just want to live your own life the way you want to live, you're going to lose your eternal destination. But if you're willing to lose and you're willing to give up your life, your will, your way, your thoughts, because some of us, amen, we think we know better than God. And even if when the church tell, when I ask you to do certain things and the church asks you to do certain things, you're going to go and do it your way. You understand? Amen. But that's your thought. That's your way. See, you've got to cling to the things of God. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but his delight shall be in the law of the Lord, and in his law shall he meditate day and night. We've got to learn how to meditate. Not just read scripture, but let it soak in. Not just read scripture, and say, I read five verses today. No, but what soaked in? What did you take in and help you to grow? What did you take in and help you to change? What did you take in and help you to get stronger in God? What did you take in so that you could help somebody with his word? For whosoever wants to save his life will lose. But whosoever loses his life for me will find that. I want to lose my life for him. I want to lose my will for him. I want him to have the way. When I thought about this and this word commitment, I pulled up two definitions and one is the word commitment means the state of quality having no dedication to his cause, having been dedicated to his cause, his activity. And here's an example. You may have a particular fast food chain or restaurant or particular business, but they dedicate their priorities to 
commit or to have quality products. Some places you can go and, and quality food, and some places you can go, it's not quality, it's just average. But you can taste the difference between quality, you understand, and average. And so they're committed to that. So every time you go there, you will have that same experience because they're committed to quality. Because quality is what's going to keep you coming back. Now, so we, we, we must understand there must be a quality that we give to God. And it must be, amen, our commitment must be a quality commitment. The second thing is that an engagement or an obligation that restricts freedom of action. Those are things like having a, a doctor's appointment, having a business appointment. When you have these appointments, you can't let anything come between you and the appointment, and you can't do anything. You must carry out the timing of the appointment because if you do not, you will miss it. And so what I'm saying to you, there is an obligation that we have to God, and if we are not obligated the way God wants us to be obligated, see, don't let anything come between you and God. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things of the world will be added unto you. We seek the things of the world. We seek to be like other people. We seek to be like our friends. We seek to be like the people down the street. We seek to be, amen, like people on our job. And what God is trying to give us to understand, that is not commitment. Commitment is knowing who you are in God. Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. I am one of the sons of God. Yes. For it says, be long now are you the sons of God. Yes. And it does not yet appear what we yes. shall be. Never lose the fact of who you are. So because of who I am, I can't talk like you talk. I can't lie like you lie. I can't be a cheat like yeah. you do. Amen. I can't do things like you do. And the people, even in my family, I've got to be separated. I've got to be dedicated. I've got to be consecrated. I've got to be committed. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 